as I was introduced, I am now an expert member in the State Expert Appraisal Committee. And before that, I was uh, working in the forest department and ret retired as uh, principal chief conservator of forest. Today, my talk is forest acts and mining. And why forests and environment have to be taken into the account while carrying out the mining. And also, I'll also try to find some answer to the, the question of why some of the appraisals or some of the approvals are getting delayed. You know that I am basically mining friendly also. My relatives in Andhra Pradesh, they are all in the mining business. So, so please don't look at me as a simply forester. I am mining friendly forester, sir. You know, the mining is an ancient industry from 2,500 years back, it is there. You know, our Chanakya, when he has written that the Kautilya, he has mentioned extensively about the mining, that too mining with the sustainability. So I read some of the texts of the Kautilya also. Mining is infrastructural industry and without which uh, nothing can move on. As I heard yesterday, uh, some of the speakers were telling that the ancient monuments and the ancient buildings were all constructed by the uh, rocks. And rocks are the very important thing which he was telling. But today I will try, behind the rocks, there are also some uh, living beating hearts. We should also look for them. There are some living beating hearts. We should uh, consider them for the, uh, before we uh, think of the mining and all. Mining, no doubt, it is a very important industry which we cannot move without that. But today I wanted to especially sensitize this gathering about the, some of the environment ecological aspects, which if you can, uh, if, if I am able to convey to you, I am sure you will understand the, the nitty gritty of the ecosystems and the ecological components. So I'll take you for five minutes into the ecology, ecology and environment. See, environment means nothing but the things which are around us, the physical environment, the climatic environment, all these things. Ecology is nothing but it is only a uh, study of the interrelationship of the living organisms with the physical components of the environment. So mining, however good it is, however important it is, still, unfortunately, still it is an activity against the nature. You have to dig, you have to uh, go into the subsurface to extract the minerals. When you are doing some activity against the nature, it is bound to have some impact on the, uh, some of the aspects of the biodiversity and uh, uh, biosphere, forest, wildlife, environment. It is bound to have the impact, however careful you are. Because it is an activity against the nature. Nature hillock is there, you are digging and going into that, or you are digging underneath. So it is an activity uh, which is certainly against the nature. So it is bound to have some impact on biodiversity. All of you know biodiversity is nothing but whatever variability we see among the uh, organisms. And the forest, wildlife, and environment, you, you certainly you know that. 
இதில் ஓ தமிழில் கொஞ்சம் பேசலாம் தமிழில் கொஞ்சம் பேசலாம் ஓ தமிழில் கொஞ்சம் பேசலாம் Sir, please uh, understand me whenever I say mining, it is not the, uh, I am talking only of the unscientific mining. Regular mining is always a disciplined activity and it is always done with the principles and the mitigation measures are also taken by the mining community. When I talk of any Ill, Ill thing of the illness of the uh, mining means, please understand that it is only unscientific mining. not our regular uh, uh, well planned mining so always this uh, uh, unscientific mining will have some impact on ecosystem and ecology yeah they said that there is a, a strong relationship between the living organisms and non living environment and there are also many issues there are many interrelationships between the animals because between two animals there are lot of interrelationships and also there are food chains in the environment well defined food chains are there the grass is eaten by the goat goat is eaten by the tiger tiger is also eaten at after the death by some other scavengers and all so a well defined food chains are in the nature and well defined trophic levels are also there in the nature trophic levels means from one level to food will go to the uh, upper levels one level to other levels so this uh, food chains trophic levels and food webs it is uh, food chains are not isolated sometimes they intertwined interconnected so all these food chains we have to understand whether our mining is affecting them this food webs we have to take care of it without seeing them uh, uh, we should not uh, disturb them konja water bottle konja dupa water water so these scientific words may be little uh, confusing for you but i will not go into that but the very interesting thing is some interdependence of the species are there forest law wildlife law environment i am trying to uh, our sars on our tamil law there are some uh, interrelationship among the organisms in forest la paranga veli paranga there are some systems for uh, for example we will say the neutralism and one aspect irukku or animal idu idu coordinate ne next time pannum bodu neengale panna pa there is interdependence and interaction among the species it may get affected suppose some animals are there some uh, neutralism that means one is not affecting other but they will uh, go together and second combination is a competition they do a lot of competition for uh, uh, mating for the food for wherever there is a scarce material they do that and third thing is immensalism in which one animal gets affected and another animal not affected similarly the commensalism is there next then parasitism predation proto cooperation next so these type of uh, nature and environment and animals are well connected so when we are doing unscientific uh, mining uh, so some of these things will get uh, imbalance so what i am saying is again unscientific mining not the uh, regular uh, well designed and uh, Uh, scientific mining because i do not want to dwell much on this uh, environmental uh, the ecological aspects there are two issues like in situ and ex situ conservation yeah they said biodiversity is a very broad uh, broad term in which there is a wild biodiversity and a domesticated biodiversity but always wild biodiversity is more 99.9% .9 
domesticated varieties 0.01%. So where do you find this wild biodiversity? Wild biodiversity, you see it only in the forest, nowhere. Forests only contain wild biodiversity of 99% available in the nature. So if you have to protect any diversity or forest or anything, ultimately you have to necessarily protect the forest. So as I said, mining, uh, the forests are reservoirs of the trees as well as reservoirs of the minerals also. But, uh, but let us see whether, uh, whether we are uh, uh, happy to do anything in the forest. Then we have ex situ conservation also. Ex situ conservation means we conserve the forests and wildlife and biodiversity, biodiversity outside the reserve forest areas. That is generally we call it as ex situ conservation. Sometimes the zoological parks where we protect the animals and all that is called as ex situ conservation. And third thing is, uh, more important thing which I want to tell is the breeding of the species. You know, one side, human population is increasing. Another side, wildlife population is decreasing. You know why? For a human being to reproduce, he does not have to have any elaborate arrangement. Simply once they are married, they'll start breed. Whether they have the house or not house, or they, they'll start breeding. But this is not the case with the animals. The animals, in order to have their uh, breeding activity, they require certain minimum requirements. If that minimum requirements are not available in the forests or in the habitats where they live in, animals will not breed. Actually, that is the reason why wild animals are decreasing, because the habitats are destruct, uh, destroyed and forests are destroyed for various reasons. Not, um, I'm generally, I'm telling not due to mining. Generally, the forests are uh, uh, destroyed, uh, environment is destroyed. That's why the requirements for the animals and for their reproductive behavior are uh, dwindling. Because of that reason, animals are not able to produce not the domesticated animals I am talking about, it is only wild animals. So for that, actually animals, they require some sort of environment enrichment is required. Suppose if there is a, one habitat where the animal require, animals are staying, they require some sort of support to live in. And they also require some sort of reinforcement training. Animal husbandry practices are needed. Some sort of social interactions for the animals are needed. Some sort of psychological well-being is needed. When all these things are available only, the wild animals will breed. As I said earlier, if a male and female are, in the, are confined to a room, maybe uh, in a month's time they'll start uh, uh, conceiving and producing. But if you put one animal, male and female, inside a room, they'll sit one side one animal and another side one animal, they never come together to for mating. So animals, wild animals, they require a properly managed habitat, a properly managed wildlife sanctuary or the national park to express their normal reproductive behavior and for their normal development of their young ones. So, that is the one reason why wildlife population is decreasing and uh, human population is increasing. Human population is increasing, that is in the normal course. But wild animals population is decreasing. That is where when the numbers came down to the very critical levels, the zoological parts of the country have been given the task of conserving in ex situ manner. In the zoological parts, we produce the animals, they produce the offsprings, and after some time, we reintroduce them into the wild, to supplement the wild populations. For example, we have done many such ex uh, ex uh, experiments like uh, Nelagiri thar and the Nelagiri langur, lion-tailed macaque. These are all very endangered species. We are somehow, we are making them to breed in the zoo and after, uh, after gaining the sufficient population in the zoo, we'll slowly put them into the 
wild. So once they are in the wild, the expectation is that they will start normally producing the uh, offsprings in the normal uh, thing. So if there is any disturbance, for example, you take this um, mining. When you do the mining, uh, because because a lot of birds come to the Vajrantangal and Karikili, a lot of bird sanctuaries are there. They fly at 30,000 feet and come to the places. The birds communicate, communicate among themselves by singing. In their world, it is singing. The communication name is singing. Because of the sounds and vibration and the noises, that singing pattern is disrupted and uh, uh, they are disoriented and they are dislocated. So similarly, some migratory paths are there. If, so, if mining or any other activity is uh, interfering with that uh, uh, corridor where elephants come and go, so then uh, the, uh, their life cycle is uh, affected. So still, despite the healthy practices followed by the mining community, still there are some challenges remaining which have to be, uh, maybe in due course of time, uh, will have to be mitigated. Especially, we have to manage the baseline data, baseline uh, levels of noise, dust, airborne emissions, fugitive emissions. So same base level emissions, if you are able to maintain, even after the mining, then it is well and good. And again, the surface and underground uh, pollutions then uh, prevent, uh, I think you follow up on it, because I am not able to coordinate both. Upon then the prevention of uh, erosion, sedimentation, damage to the flora and fauna, degrading soil quality, soil fertility, land subsidence, and slope uh, failures. These are the some issues still we will have to tackle. And uh, habitat, when you are doing nearer to the forest areas, the habitats are distracted. And habitats, prey-based management, suppose if there are tiger population inside, sufficient prey base should be available. Prey base means uh, the spotted deer or some other deer species, which are primarily the food for the tigers. So that prey base has to be kept intact. Habitat has to be kept intact. Then only the, uh, these, uh, all these things, animals and all, they will, uh, uh, because as I said, behind the rocks, there are living hearts of animals and human beings. As uh, some of our speakers yesterday said, rocks are very important, rocks are of ancient thing, and we have a very famous temples made of rocks. And every day life is linked to the rocks. I fully agree with it, and country GDP depends on the rocks, everything. But at the same time, we must understand the, the beating hearts behind these rocks also, that is, human beings and the animals. And in the SCSC, when we are appraising, we used to prescribe some plants, planting works. I heard yesterday that it is, a, I know, it is a little difficult for individual uh, small, small quarry workers, uh, small, small one, uh, quarry owners to do the planting of 500 uh, plants per hectare. This 500 was fixed because generally 5 into 5 assessment we follow. 5 into 5 means uh, 25, uh, 10,000 20, divided by 25, around 400 plants. With all uh, casualty and all, that's why we prescribe 500 plants per hectare. Why we are compulsorily prescribing this uh, tree planting is basically trees perform three functions. One is deflection. Whatever sound waves comes, it breaks the sound waves. Trees breaks the sound waves. Then second thing is absorption. Trees also absorb the sounds. Third thing is Refraction. Uh, the trees will re echo the, um, uh, redirect the echoing noises. So, one deflection, absorption, and refraction. 
these three are the very important functions of the trees, which will take care of your uh, main uh, b b m mining uh, bad impacts, that is noise, dust, and uh, uh, emissions. And also the experiments proved that if there is a belt of 30 meters, green belt around any industry or any uh, quarry, it will reduce a minimum of 5 to 10 decibels of sound. For every 30 meters of belt, you can reduce at least 10 decibels of sound. That is why we prescribe, we, we are very much aware in our thing, it is individually difficult, that's why we used to suggest sometimes you go to the forest department and get ceilings there and uh, do that. Only precisely for the, despite knowing that it is a very uh, cumbersome for the individual quarry owners, we are prescribing because for precisely for these reasons, especially for the deflection purpose, refraction and absorption. The trees are the cheapest means to take care of these things. Yeah. Ajit? Huh? Yeah. Then coming back to the, the forest acts and uh, these things, right from starting from the sea, forest protection was never a problem prior to 1970s. All problems have come after the 1970s. So an amendment to the constitution was brought in in uh, 1976 that is the 42 amendment, in which the first time the words of forest, wildlife, rivers, lakes, and environment are brought into the constitution. First time these words were brought into the constitution. Earlier there was no mention of these things. So, so importantly, there are four or five acts. One is Tamil Nadu Forest Act. Tamil Nadu Forest Act is very important, that is 1882 especially for vesting of the ownership of the forest with the government. That is, if there is a patch of Porambok land that is converted or made into the reserve forest by a due process of law which takes almost one or two years for declaring them ultimately into the reserve forest. A small Porambok land of five hectares land, if it has to become reserve forest, it takes this much time. So this for Tamil Nadu Forest Act 1882, the main function is it provides for vesting of ownership of normal forest lands with the government in the name of reserve forest. Once they are made into the reserve forest, the procedure is available for, uh, uh, for carrying out different operations, removal of forest produce, what are the punishments, how do you prevent the smuggling, confiscation procedures, all these things are there in the Tamil Nadu Forest Act. Even mining, uh, wherever it is permissible, mining is also permitted. Then there is a Forest Conservation Act, which most of the miners are interested to know. Forest Conservation Act 1980, uh, many thousands of acres are carelessly diverted for other purposes, for construction of dams, for construction of uh, roads, and several other purposes are giving the patas to the people, everything. Mrs. Indira Gandhi, during 1980, has brought in this act, 1980, Forest Conservation Act. After this act, the diversions have come down to the 10% of the, what was in the earlier. But for essential activities, the Forest Conservation Act provides for it. Whatever you do, the reserve forest, in the Tamil Nadu Forest Act, right from uh, section four to the 16, which takes almost two years, in this case, if you want a patch of land, whole thing has to be reversed, disreserved. So the process of disreservation and the process of obtaining the NPV value, the process of obtaining the compensated land, they're all painstakingly taking a lot of time. That's why FC clearance normally takes time. Then there is a Wildlife Protection Act 1972, wherein most of the sanctuaries, wildlife sanctuaries in Tamil Nadu, there are 15 wildlife sanctuaries, 15 bird sanctuaries, 
five national parks are there. 2,300 reserve forests are there. So this wildlife act very effectively protects the, all the wildlife. And then Environment Protection Act. Under this Environment Protection Act only, we uh, have our environment uh, uh, EIA notification 2006, under which the SIA and SIA, they, we function. Whenever a proponent applies to us, we have a process of selection, uh, then uh, scoping, then uh, appraisal, then EC issuing, then putting the conditions, complaints of, uh, looking at the complaints of conditions. All these processes are covered under Environment Protection Act. Then there is a Biodiversity Act, important thing. Biodiversity Act, as I said, wild biodiversity, domestic biodiversity are there. It prevents majorly null issues. One is biopiracy. Biopiracy means the traditional knowledge of the tribals and other communities is hijacked. To prevent that biopiracy, the Biodiversity Act is given. Then there is a bioprospecting, that is commercial utilization of the biodiversity. So that should not be at the cost of others. Then another issue is there. That if there is any traditional knowledge, it should be made use with the knowledge or information to the, that particular community. Without their knowledge, we cannot use their uh, thing. Then it also provides for the IPR, intellectual property rights. Of course, there is another act which is not connected with you, that is um, Tamil Nadu Forest, uh, Tamil Nadu Act 14, that is a preventive detention act, which does not, uh, uh, not necessary to be a thing. And there is only one issue before I concluding it, uh, uh, there is a one ecosense to zones or, um, it is something like, in one word I'll tell you, how this evaluation has come is, First only, all Porambok lands. Slowly, government thought that to protect forests and wildlife, we should convert them into the reserve forest. The evolution started like this. First, Porambok lands, all government lands. To protect them, government wanted them to be in the reserve forest category. After farming reserve forest, still government thought that there are many wildlife-rich areas or biodiversity rich areas. So government thought that all right, now we should have a specific type of protection areas, that is sanctuaries and national parks, they wanted to have it. So first stage is Porambok lands, government lands, second stage is reserve forest, third stage sanctuaries and national parks, and fourth stage have come now, again the central government and the Supreme Court, they thought that still some more protection have to be given to the uh, forest and wildlife. That's why eco-sensitive zones concept was brought in and they thought that it's not enough if we declare only the uh, sanctuaries and national parks. We should also declare some area around these uh, sanctuaries as, as eco-sensitive zones. So the evolution came like this. Normal government lands, reserve forests, wildlife sanctuaries and national parks, and then eco-sensitive zones. Like that, gradually, government is taking uh, these steps to upgrade the protection mechanism to that. In that process, some of the mining permissions are also getting delayed in giving, because as government is upgrading it, so the mining, the, the clearing proposals are also getting held up, because you need to have Forest Conservation Act clearance if you are digging into the forest. You need to have wildlife clearance state and national board for wildlife you need to have. And you need to have this EC from the Environment Act also you need it. As Mr. Bala, Bala, Dr. Bala said, clearance wangan wane rakaranga. It is a fact. Because the government is upgrading it. Upgrading the necessity for the protection. The naturally the permissions also take like this. With this I will end it. Any, uh, questions or anything, you are most welcome. I'll try to answer. Because I'm... Thank you, sir. In the association of Sarba, 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 
ஸோ அந்த இடத்துல அது பண்ணுறக்கு வழியில் நாங்கள் அவுட் ஆஃப் அதர் ஏரியாவில் நாங்கள் கண்டிப்பாக பண்ணி பண்ண முடியும் பவுண்டரியில் பண்ணுறதுல எங்களுக்கு ஏன்னா அது ரோடு விட்டு போக பேலன்ஸ் இடம் இல்லை அப்போ அது போக நிறைய பெர்மிட்டிங் சார் முதல்ல வி தாட் தட் இந்த என்டையர் ப்ராஜெக்ட் ஏரியாக்குள்ளே தான் பண்ணணும்னு பார்த்தோம் அது பண்ண முடியலன்னா சம் ஆஃப் தி வில்லேஜுக்குள்ள காமன் ஏரியாஸில் கூட பண்ண சொல்லி தான் இப்போ எல்லாம் அப்படி தான் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்கிறோம் ஆனால் மினிமம் ரிக்குவயர்மெண்ட் நாங்கள் அது அது கன்சன்ஷன் கொடுக்கல அந்த ஃபைவ் ஹண்ட்ரட் நட சொன்னோம் உங்கள் ப்ராஜெக்ட் ஏரியா ஒன் ஹெக்டருக்குள்ள சப்போஸ் ஒரு ஹண்ட்ரட் தான் நட முடிஞ்சதுன்னா நானூறு ஒரு வில்லேஜ் போகிறோம்போக்குள்ள பக்கத்தில் நாட் வெரி ஃபார் somewhere you can sir. compensate Thank and uh, give us the uh, coordinates of that area that is enough we are uh, agreeing for that apro ipo naanga yetkenave population daastiyanadala naanga alla kallodikirk oorukul irundhu apdiye malai adi varadhukku poitom ipo vandu malai distance vera etch panite poningna and the eco sensitive zone andha mari adhu sila area thila boundary innu fix e pannala 10 km na kal quarry e panna mudiyam poi boundary fix pannadhu only டோட்டல் தேர்ட்டி ஃபோர் இருக்குது நம்ம டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் ப்ளஸ் நைன் தேர்ட்டி ஃபோர் சாங்சுரிஸ் இருக்குது டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் சாங்சுரிஸ்க்கு ஈகோ சென்சிட்டிவ் ஜோன்ஸ் ஹேவ் பின் ப்ராப்பர்லி டெமார்கேட்டட் அண்ட் டிக்ளேர்ட் ஓன்லி நைனுக்கு இட் இஸ் இன் தி வேரியஸ் ஸ்டேஜஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் இருந்தாலும் கூட சிலத்துக்கு நாங்கள் இப்போது ரீசெண்ட்லி எங்கள் கம்பெனியில் கூட வி ஆர் ட்ரைங் டு சம் கவர்மெண்ட் இது இது ஒரு ப்ரப்போசல்ஸ் இருக்குது அது வச்சுட்டு சம்திங் வி ஆர் ட்ரைங் டு டூ இட் அந்த நைனுக்கு கூட அதர்வைஸ் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் சாங்ஷன்ஸ்க்கு ஒரு பிரச்சனை கிடையாது ஓன்லி நைனுக்கு சென்ட்ரல் கவர்மெண்ட்டு ஸ்டேட் கவர்மெண்ட் கதையில் கரஸ்பாண்டன்ஸில் கொஞ்சம் ப்ரப்போசல்ஸில் இருக்கு அதனால தான் ஏன்னா நான் சொன்ன மாதிரி கிரேட் ப்ரொடெக்ஷன் லெவல்ஸ் இன்க்ரீஸ் ஆயிடுச்சு ஓவர் தி இயர்ஸ் நைன்டீன் செவன்டிலிருந்து நீங்கள் பார்த்தால் ஓன்லி நார்மல் ஃபாரஸ்ட் ஏரியாஸ் நாட் ரிசர்வ் ஃபாரஸ்ட் கேட்டகரிஸ் அதில் இருந்து டூ தௌசண்ட் த்ரீ ஹண்ட்ரட் ரிசர்வ் ஃபாரஸ்ட் இருக்கு இன்றைக்கு தமிழ்நாடுல அது ஃபஸ்ட் ஸ்டெப் அதில் இருந்து இப்போ ஃபிஃப்டீன் சாங்சுரிஸ் 15 bird sanctuaries, 5 tiger reserves, 5 national parks. This is another step up. That is the eco-sensitive zone. This is another step up. So, if we go to the top, it is bound to have some delays in the clearances. You can see, all the areas are in the reserve forest clearances. Now, the government is relaxed. Otherwise, 1 km is going to go. That time, there is no pressure. Then, wildlife clearance you have to take. then the environment clearance you have to take other different process idella edukondu danna as the protection for the forest and wildlife and environment is being upgraded constantly by the government as well as the highest court of the country then this necessity has come appra sir ipo naanga yetkenave andha mari or overthala vandutom ipo vandu modal vandu ordinary detonator irundhudu appo delay detonator vandhudu அப்புறம் நானல் டெக்னாலஜி வந்துருச்சு இப்போ எலக்ட்ரானிக் டெக்னாலஜி வந்துருச்சு ஸோ சவுண்டும் நாய்ஸும் ரொம்ப கம்மியாயிடுச்சு ஸோ நீங்க ஃபாரஸ்ட் இருந்தோ வைல்ட் லைஃப்ல இருந்தோ இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் டிஸ்டன்ஸ் கம்மி பண்ணி கொடுத்தா மைனபிள் ரிசோர்ஸ் கொஞ்சம் ஈஸியா இருக்கும் எங்களுக்கு வேற வழியே இல்லைன்னா பாப்புலேஷன் தாசி தமிழ்நாட்டில் எல்லா இடத்துலயும் முட்டுக்கள் நட்டி வச்சுட்டாங்க நாங்க இந்த கல்லே உடைக்க முடியாது எங்கேயுமே நாங்க ஒரு பவுண்டரி நாங்க இருக்கிற இடமே ஃபாரஸ்ட் ஓரத்துக்கு போயிட்டோம் ஸோ அங்க வந்து அந்த ஒன் கிலோமீட்டர் அது அதெல்லாமே வந்து எங்களுக்கு சவுண்ட் அதெல்லாம் ஒரு ஒரு மினிமம் ஒரு ஒரு நூறு மீட்டர் இரநூறு மீட்டருக்கே எங்களுக்கு வந்து சவுண்ட் கம்மியா வந்துருச்சு அந்த மாதிரி டெக்னாலஜி வந்துருச்சு சார் சவுண்ட் மட்டும் இல்லை நான் சொல்றேன் ஐ இல் டெல் யூ ஒன் எக்ஸாம்பிள் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் தி சம் கெமிக்கல் கண்டென்ட் இன் தி வாட்டர் ஃபார் விச் த பேர்ட்ஸ் கம் அண்ட் டேக் அது எக்ஸ்பெரிமெண்ட்ல என்ன பண்ணிட்டாங்கன்னா அந்த எக் ஷெல் இஸ் பிகமிங் திம் திம் ஆகி அந்த யோக் அதுல எல்லாமே ஈஸிலி பிரேக் ஆகுதா birds ke not only nice water pollution water na not quarries mattum endru na solala total environment na solra environment la chemical industry vera nama mining la vandu pollution romba kammi and blasting vera mining la kuda some sort of slurry tailand slurry is all acid drainages all these things sometimes will happen uh, maybe only not quarry otherwise quarry unga stone quarry illa manganese iron coal எல்லாமே இருக்கு மைனிங் நான் ஜென்ரலாக மைனிங் சொல்கிறோம் நீங்கள் சொல்கிறது ஸ்பெசிஃபிகலி ஃபார் தி இது பட் நாங்கள் வி ஆர் பவுண்ட் டு ஃபாலோ தி ரூல்ஸ் ரூல்ஸ் ஆர் நாட் ஃப்ரேம்டு பை சியா ஆர் சியாக் தி ஆர் ஆல் ஃப்ரேம்டு பை தி ஸ்டேட் கவர்மெண்ட் அண்ட் தி சென்ட்ரல் கவர்மெண்ட் ஸோ தட் இஸ் தி ப்ராப்ளம் வி ஆர் ஓன்லி புட்டிங் சம் கண்டிஷன்ஸ் ஓகே யூ பிளான் திஸ் திங்ஸ் ஃபார் மிட்டிகேஷன் பர்பஸ் and we are also strict in enforcing it ungala nare perga inga experience irukku na ketti irukrom or thada ninga seri nattingala illa anadhu ena precisely for this purpose they are the cheapest filters of noise vibration dust 
அனுமதி <laughs> 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 Okay. You well explained that uh, gra- goat is eating grass. Hello? And... Uh, Switch on the mic. Hmm. But it's not audible. Your voice is not audible. Uh-huh. Yeah, sorry. So, good afternoon, sir. I'm Nirvay from JK Tires. You well explained that uh, goat is eating grass and uh, tiger is eating uh, goat and the, uh, this uh, ecosystem is maintained. One of your slides I saw, sir, that mining is an unnatural process. Sir, are we not uh, utilizing... Not unnatural process. I have not said unnatural process. It is ag- mining and is an activity done against the nature because your nature in the farmers' hillocks are there. Do, um, uh, all uh, um, uh, sand dunes, uh, dunes are there. Uh, different systems of landforms are there. By doing the mining, we are breaking them. That's why I said it is an activity against the nature is hillock. We are not breaking it. That's yes, what I mean to say, not uh, uh, illegal activity or uh, unnatural activity, I did not say that. Right, sir. Th- that is why I was just asking that the resources have been provided by the nature and we are uh, utilizing that. Is it Nothing not wrong with it. Please, yeah. uh, what I, my whole presentation is for the unscientific mining only. Right. Thank you so much. Unscientific mining only. Sir, I am Krishnamurthy, Tamil Nadu Small Mine Owner Federation. Okay. Vice President. இந்த இசி அப்ளை பண்ணுறப்ப நீங்கள் கமிட்டியில் வந்து டிஎஃப்ஓ கிட்டேருந்து ஒரு லெட்ரு வாங்க சொல்கிறீங்க டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் கிலோமீட்டர்ஸில் எந்தெந்த ரிசர்வ் ஃபாரஸ்ட் இருக்குது சான்ச்சரி இருக்குது புதுசாக ஏதாவது வந்திருக்கான்னு அது வந்து பர்வேஸ்லேயே நோட்டிஃபை ஆகி வந்துடுது உங்களுக்கே நீங்களே பார்த்தா தெரியும் அது இல்லாமல் நாங்கள் மைனிங் பிளானில் கொடுக்குறோம் இஏஏ ரிப்போர்ட்டில் கொடுக்குறோம் இது எங்களுக்கு அன்னெசரி டிலே காஸ்ட் டைம் மேக்ஸிமம் ஃபிஃப்டீன் டேஸ் ஆகுது ஒன் மந்த் ஆகுது அவங்க இன்ஸ்பெக்ட் பண்ணி கொடுக்குறான்றாங்க அதை நீங்கள் நாங்கள் கொடுக்குற ரிப்போர்ட்டை வச்சு நீங்களே வந்து உங்களுடைய இதில் செக் பண்ணி செய்யலாம் இல்லை சார் பண்ணுறோம் பண்ணலாம் பட் இது வாட் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் இஸ் ரிசர்வ் ஃபாரஸ்ட் ஆர் ஸ்டாட்யூட்ரி அது ஆக்டில் பார்த்தா அது இப்போது தமிழ்நாடு ஃபாரஸ்ட் ஆக்டில் தட் வேர்ட் தேவ் நாட் யூஸ்டு அதர்வைஸ் It is vested with the crown, and the Elvitanga, crown, C-R-O-W-N, crown. Our highest status is the reserve forest. That is the fact that the forest is not there. As for the forest act, DFO is the only person who can give. Not the collector or not the tassildar or, or VO or any, any person. Only the DFO is statutorily empowered to say that it is a reserve forest or not a reserve forest. No one else, unfortunately. அது கவர்மெண்ட் ரெக்கார்டில் வர்றது இல்லையா சார் எது அந்த ஃபாரஸ்ட்டுனுடைய பவுண்ட்ரிஸ் ஆமாம் ரிசர்வ் ஃபாரஸ்ட் வருது இப்போ தான் எல்லாம் ஆன்லைனில் அவங்ககிட்ட போய் நாங்கள் கேட்டாலும் அவங்க வந்து நீங்கள் சொல்கிறது கரெக்ட் தான் ஆன்லைனில் இப்போ பர்வேஸ் இப்போ பண்ணுறாங்க பர்வேஸ் பண்ணிட்டாங்க சில நெசரி டிலே காஸ்ட் எல்லாமே இதாகுது இல்லை அதுக்கு தான் நான் சொல்லிட்டு இருந்தேன் சில பேருக்கு அந்த மாதிரி பர்டிகுலர் ப்ராப்ளம் இருக்கும்போது ஐ யூஸ் டு கிவ் மை நம்பர் டு சம் ஆஃப் தி கன்சல்டன்ஸ் கூட நான் கொடுத்துட்டு இருந்தேன் யாராவது இஃப் தே ஃபீல் எனி டிஃபிகல்ட்டி அட் தி டிஎஃப் ஆஃபீஸ் ஃபாரஸ்ட் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஐ ஸ்டில் பீங் தி சீனியர் ஆஃபீஸர் அட்லீஸ்ட் தேல் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் மீ வேறு இமீடியட்டாக கொடுங்க அவங்களுக்கு வந்து சொன்னால் தேர் கிவிங் இட் அந்த மாதிரி எக்ஸ்ட்ராடினரி கேஸில் வி ஆர் ஹெல்பிங் தெம் நான் அந்த மாதிரி சொல்லி செஞ்சுட்டு இருக்கிறேன் தவறு கேளுங்க ஆமாம் ஆ சொல்லுங்க I have to clarify one thing. Now, in case of MOEF, mm. Mm. whatever is the latitude, longitude and the, and the location of the project is given, mm. the department, the mm. concern department, whoever is the sector, they go through the DSS system and they verify and if they find that that particular area is within 10 kilometers from the 
reserved for a star, the sanctuary, then only the proponent is asked to submit a certificate. Otherwise, they don't ask for the certificate. This is the practice in MOEF, number one. Number two, regarding the green belt, what uh, Mr. Reddy, Reddy was telling, the green belt, the decision of green belt or the plantation is again, you know, varies from committee to committee. Now, if you take the industries, in case of industries, 33% is a mandate as per the national forest policy. That is what is insisted in MOF. In case of mining, the primary requirement is the boundary, the lease boundary, seven and a half meter width of the lease boundary should be covered by plantation. This is the primary requirement. And the rest is left to the discretion. But however, depending upon the extent of the area, the density of plantation is decided. It is discretionary decision by the committee. This is what happens there. And probably Tamil Nadu, you know, I, I love to say, I'm sorry to say that because I am in the policy committee of MOEF. Hmm. Tamil Nadu is one of the state which is the most headache state for MOF. Yeah, which is most? Most headache. There are two states in the country. One is UP, one is Tamil Nadu. See, everything, they refer to them. This SIA or SIAC, any doubt they refer to government of India, MOF. And whatever MOF writes back, that they don't honor. I have seen many cases myself. In fact, I have answered some of the cases where public hearing was to be exempted, they did not honor. So, Tamil Nadu government, Tamil Nadu committees, they should definitely pragmatically approach the problems of the mine owners. That is what is more important of the day. If industry has to develop, definitely the approach should be pragmatic. Now we talk about ease of doing business, ease of doing mining, so many things. Now, in fact, for all of your information, we are in the process of decriminalization of all the acts in central level. I am in the committee. The, because, you know, I mean, like EP Act, we have a, uh, EP Act, you have a penalty as well as imprisonment. Now we are removing imprisonment. Like mines and minerals. You have, you know, under mines regulation, there is again, you know, penalty and imprisonment. We are removing that from every authority or this government, all criminal concerned, wherever there is an imprisonment that is going to be removed, it is already in the parliament. So we are also doing some relaxations and, you know, bringing out a lot of, I mean, what do you call uh, ease of doing things. But one thing is, you know, we have to also raise to the occasion for the industry. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, whatever question, already we have surpassed that time. Only one question allowed. Yeah, actually, in continuation to Mr. Krishnamurthy, see, we have been given training sustainably by the MOF to all EIA consultants like me. Recently, whenever they are changing the portal in Parvez, they are giving a adequate training how to handle the project and get the environmental clearance as early as possible. In fact, uh, the MOF is planning to reduce the 180 days to come down in a shorter time. But the every CR committee should cooperate, actually. As Sir rightly said, we regret to say that. Because in the Parigas 2.0, we have been given training in Hyderabad. We have to conduct a DGB survey of the mine boundary, plot it directly in the Paris portal itself, it's showing all four parameters. Reserve forest, protected area, wildlife, and so on. And it is very clear, 10 kilometers is a limit for wildlife. But very unfortunately, our Tamil Nadu CI is asking 25 kilometers, the two from DFO. It is not only a time and cost also. So I request uh, our member secretary 
though i am meeting every week in chennai in the meeting to consider this fact when moi is allowing in the portal 2.0 we, we request you to give some relaxation for 25 kilometers in case if you have any doubt a project is fall within a closer distance of 10 kilometers we agree we are for example 10.1 10.2 like that we agree to give a letter from dfo to get a ground truth information based on gps survey or whatever maybe but when clear stands when information is more than uh, 15 kilometers 20 kilometers asking a letter from dfo i think don't mistake me it is a meaningless thank you sir